Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name from the rising sun. Great is the faithfulness to me. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. We bless your name, O oh God. Somebody go ahead and begin to share this broadcast. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Though the sun may rise, I will praise your name. It will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Hallelujah. Great is your faithfulness. Somebody go ahead and begin to share this broadcast. Glory to God. From the rising sun, I will praise your name. Hallelujah. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It never runs out. It never runs out. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. His faithfulness cannot end. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to your name. There is nobody like Jesus. No, not one person. So I encourage you, people of God, go ahead and begin to share because his love for us never runs out. Great is his faithfulness towards us and it cannot end. My God. Great is his faithfulness towards us that will never run out. It will never end. No, it won't. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome one. Welcome all as you join. Amen. Somebody said they're enjoying Thanksgiving in Canada. Welcome, Canada. Hallelujah. Good evening from Nigeria. Welcome, Florida. Welcome, St. Catherine, Jamaica. Welcome, Hartford, Connecticut. Welcome, Bloomfield, Connecticut. Windsor, Connecticut. Aruba, welcome, Aruba, Canada. Hallelujah, welcome, welcome, welcome one. Welcome all people of God, go ahead and begin to share. Welcome, St. Catherine, welcome. My God, we have a few Canadians in the house. My God, we have Nigeria in the house. Glory be to your name. We have St. Catherine in the house. We have Bloomfield in the house. 
Somebody go ahead and begin to share his faithfulness towards us. Will never run out. Will never run out. Will never ever ever run out. Hallelujah. Jesus, somebody go ahead and begin to pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. Lord, tonight we place this platform in your hands. We commit this platform in your hands tonight, Lord. I commit every soul on this platform in your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My God, you said your faithfulness towards us will never run out. And tonight we decree and we declare a breakthrough for your people upon this life. My God show up on somebody's behalf tonight in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth your faithfulness towards us it continues it never run out oh God you have the biggest distribution center you never run out my God my God my God because great is your faithfulness towards us thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Your faithfulness, it cannot run out. Glory be to your name, God. It will never run out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you. Lord, I bless you. Oh, you sit on the throne, Lord. My God. And you look down on your people tonight. We decree and we declare something new is about to happen. Something new is about to happen. There will be a transformation tonight on this platform. Oh God, we give you praise and we thank you because you are worthy of our praise. You are holy and righteous and you are sitting high and you are looking down on your people tonight who to breathe upon. But I decree and I declare upon this platform, you are breathing tonight afresh upon your people. Glory be to your name. You're breathing afresh upon your people. And we give your praise tonight in advance. We praise you in advance. Hallelujah. We praise you tonight in advance. Glory to God. We praise you in advance, Lord. We decree and we declare a breakthrough in advance. We are, de we are, we are, we are rejoicing in the spirit in advance. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. I give you praise. I lift your name this hour. Glory be to your name. We thank you. From glory to glory. My God, from faith to faith. From strength to strength. From glory to glory to glory to glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. My God, I cover every soul that is here in the blood of Jesus Christ. My God. And I release a fresh oil, fresh anointing upon this platform. Fresh anointing, fresh oil in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Fresh anointing, fresh oil. My God, my God, fresh anointing, fresh oil upon your people, Lord. Have your way. Jesus, have your way. We come against every distraction, everything that is set for to distract your people. We bind up every distraction tonight in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We destroy it with the blood of Jesus Christ. Every disgrace that they are planning to send forth to your doorstep tonight, we, we destroy it, we dismantle it. My God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. My brother in Canada, you said you're celebrating you said you're celebrating Thanksgiving in Canada. But the Lord is revealing something to me about you, about your health. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hababoko Shaya. The Spirit of the Lord is revealing something to me about your health. My brother over there in Canada, Richard, is this. As is, I don't know how you pronounce it. 
But every sickness, everything that will cause you to take medication, tonight I bind it up. I bind it up. Any sickness that will cause you to be taking medication, oh God, tonight I bind it up. I bind it up. I bind it up in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I uproot it out of you. Any sickness that you're walking around with tonight, I bind it up. I call it out to burn and dry up by fire. I burn it dry up and die by fire right now anything inside of you that will cause you to take medication hallelujah Jesus hey I burn it up right now die by fire in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My God. Jesus. Jesus. My God. Glory to your name. Glory to your name, O oh God. Jesus. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. We give you thanks. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Sister Janeta Lawrence, the Spirit of the Lord is telling me that you need strength. I should pray for you for strength. You need strength. I don't know what's going on. But the Lord is telling me to pray for you for strength. The Lord is telling me to pray for you for strength. I decree and I declare strength in your body. Strength in your spiritual life. Strength to pray. You need strength so you can intercede for yourself. Hallelujah. You don't have strength to pray for yourself. There is none. And the spirit of Baba Koshata, Baba Yala Kasataya, the spirit of the Lord is telling me to pray for you so you can be strong to pray for yourself. You need prayer. And these prayers, you're going to have to pray. You're going to have to pray to God. You're going to have to cry out to God. You need strength. I decree and I declare strength from above. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my God, counter with strength. The Bible said, and the Lord clothe Gideon with power. Tonight I decree and I declare you to be clothed with strength. Strength to endure. Strength to go on. My God, strength to pray. That's all you need. Strength. Oh God, I come against your weaknesses. Because if the Lord is saying you need strength, it means that you are weak. And he said, I'll make the weak say that they are strong. I declare strength upon your life. Strength upon strength. Sister Janet and Lawrence, whatever the circumstance is, anything that is causing you to be weak in any area of your life, I decree and I declare strength. Strength upon strength. Grace upon grace. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know your story, my sister. We have not spoken in a while. But the Lord said, I should pray for you for strength. And I decree and I declare strength upon your life. Glory be to your name. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Jesus. My brother Samuel over there in Italy. Welcome. My God. My brother Samuel over there in Italy. God bless you. Welcome. May the Lord show up for you. I de yes, I decree and I declare the favor of God to locate you. I decree and I declare the favor of God to locate you wherever you are so you can testify. Testimony of favor will come to your life in the name of Jesus Christ. No, I decree and I declare it done. The favor of God upon your life. Jesus, Sister Nelson, you know, I've been seeing the name, but I wasn't sure if this was you. Welcome. God bless you. God bless you. May anything that you have lost be restored unto you. Sister Nelson Samuda, may anything that you have lost, may anything, yes, that has gone from you be restored. May you be restored. Divine restoration upon your life. I speak as a mouthpiece of God. Divine restoration upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Divine restoration. Hallelujah. Jesus. Divine restoration. Divine restoration, whatever was taken from you, whatever you have lost, whatever big chunk, yes, has left you. I pray for you to be restored. Divine restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Divine restoration. Glory to God. Somebody said, Lord, restore me. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome. If you're just joining, welcome. Welcome to dinner with God. You know, in the mornings, we have breakfast with Jesus. In the evening, in the afternoon, during noontime, you know, we have lunch with God. And in the nighttime, we have dinner. Some people have late night dinner. Some people are still waiting in line in a restaurant to be seated. Much more to be served. Hallelujah. Sister Janetta, you're saying, yes, it's true. I know it's true. God never lied to me. I know you need strength. The Lord is revealing to me you need strength. You're weak. You're weak. You're too weak. And you need strength. For the very job that you do, you need strength. You need strength to pray at work. You need strength to carry on. Hallelujah. You need strength. And the Lord said, I have to pray for you. That's why I'm here to pray. Amen. I pray the Lord strengthen you. Hababo Koshaya. You need strength. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking. That's why I'm here at this hour. Yes. My God, welcome, 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 welcome my brothers and my sisters, hallelujah, from near and far, yes, some are far away, Italy, Nigeria, that's West Africa, yes, far, far away, what, like uh, 15 or 14 hours away, 16 hours away, 10 hours away, in England, nine and a half hours away, Fort Lauderdale, 17 hours in driving my god hey thank you jesus glory to god new jersey mm -hmm. new jersey patterson new jersey grenada jesus new york long island brooklyn queens the Bronx, Manhattan, way out there in Florida, Ocala, Florida, Jesus, glory to your name, Jamaica, 
Hallelujah. Somebody glorify God with me. Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Kingston, New York. Ha! Ah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You have been good. Hey, you have been good. Jesus, Sister Michelle, you are asking for the Lord to restore you. May you be restored in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May you be restored. I pray for restoration upon you. Sister Michelle, you are asking to be restored. May the Lord restore you of all and give you double portion. You know, there is a scripture in the Bible that reminds us, God give you double for your troubles. The Lord will give you. He gave Job double for his trouble. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I'm here and I'm excited because, and usually when I get this excited, it's because God is doing something. Yeah. Usually when I get excited, when I'm on the live broadcast, it's because God is blessing his people. Testimonies are on their way. Mm -hmm. Testimonies are on their way. Usually when it's like this. Glory be to God. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My brother, Wilfred, over there in Grenada, the Lord is revealing to me something is bothering you. And you are expecting a breakthrough. This thing, you are praying on it. You don't talk about it, but the Lord revealed it to me. You're worried about it. You're praying about it. And you're praying in expectancy, which is a good thing. And the Lord is saying, continue in prayer. This thing draw you closer to God. You know, I was reading this morning about Ezekiah in the book of Isaiah chapter 38. Ezekiah was sick unto death. He was very sick and he didn't pray. But when God sent Isaiah to come and pray and talk to him and tell him you're going to die, Ezekiah start to pray. You see, some of us, we take things too light. We are too simple. The Bible said the person that can discern, the prudent man, will see trouble and walk away from it. But the simple man, see trouble and walk into it. We cannot be too simple, my brother Wilfred. You need to be radical. The Lord wants to give you this thing. But you are too simple. Oh, Sister Anna Spana says she is in Georgia. Welcome, Georgia. That's down south. That's further south. Hallelujah. The Bible said the prudent man, he sees trouble and he turn away from it. But the simple man, we cannot be two simple people of God. And when the Bible said man, it's not only referring to male, it's referring to male and female. Some of us, we read the scripture and we fix it the way we want to. And that's not how it's supposed to be. The Bible is referring to us all. So it's time for us to pay attention to some words. And this is why when you read one version of the Bible and you don't fully understand, you need to, if you don't have a second Bible, go on the internet and search up for other versions of Bible and so you can break down the scripture, so you can get a full understanding of what the word is saying to you. Don't leave the Bible confused. Glory to God. Sister Maria Maris, you're down there in Aruba. The Lord said he's going to surprise you. It's something, and it's not what you're think, thinking. No, there, there is something that's bothering you. And, and God said, don't worry about it because I have something better 
for you. Something better is coming your way. Just, just get this thing off of your mind. Something, some issue about Jamaica is bothering you. So, some, somebody in Jamaica is resting in your spirit. The Lord said, I have somebody better. I don't know what that means. The Lord said, relax, I got somebody better for you. I'm talking to Sister Maria Maris. Hallelujah, yes. I'm calling you by your right name that you're using on Facebook because that's not your real name. So I'm, I'm going in your direction tonight. The Spirit of the Lord is saying, you keep getting these calls and this thing is resting with you. You know, even when you're eating, I see you. And the Lord said to tell you, he got somebody better. <laughs> you see, God have a way to, to show up in our life. When are you coming to help me preach? One day? I needed to come and help me preach. You want to say hi to my Facebook followers? Just come and say hi. Because you're going to preach. Come say hi. Come say hello. Have a good night. You need to come and because you're going to preach. Bye. Pray for me. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes you have to prophesy in your children's life. Yes. You have to speak it into existence. You have to, people have got to listen to me. You have to speak it into existence. Yes, Sister Maria. The Spirit of the Lord said, even when you're eating, because I, I can see you in the Spirit, even when you're eating, you're thinking about these conversations. But the Spirit of the Lord said, rest that thing. Rest it. Something good is going to happen. Something good is in store. We are together again. Just praising the Lord. God know what you love. Let God work on it. He said he's the potter and we are the clay. Sister Maria, I'm just going to sit here and, 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 and bring it to you according to the word of God. He said to tell you he's the potter. He is the one that make all things new. And when you have something that's broken, leave it to God. And when you yourself are broken, go to God. He said, come with your broken pieces. Come with your broken heart. Come broken. Because I know how to put you back together. Hallelujah. The path I want to put you back together again. Hallelujah, Jesus. He said, I know how to fix those cracks in your life. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said he know how to do it. Somebody go ahead and begin to share this word. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory be to your name. The Lord said to tell her, Sister Maria, you see, I'm going around in circles because God is speaking to me. And I'm going around in circles. Why? Hallelujah. He said to tell you, he's fixing up someone to send to you. Don't lose your sleep over something that you cannot fix. Don't lose your sleep over something that you have no control of. God knows what you need and what's best for you. Jesus. 
<laughs> ah. Lord, let me testify before the month of October ends. Declare it. You see, you have to, don't just say something, believe. Believe. You see, Ezekiah prayed without fear. And what did he say? What kind of prayer did he pray? His prayers were, God, remember. Ezekiah said, oh Lord, remember. Oh, I walk right before you. That was his prayer. He was reminding God about his life. He was interceding for himself. So I came to ask someone tonight, are you ready? Somebody said, I'm over here in Virginia. Oh, we have Virginia in the house. <laughs> Sister Keisha, I will remember that. He reminded God about the things that he did in the sight of God. He did not remind God what the prophet said to him. He did not remind God about the house, the car, the kids, the wife. No, he remind God about his walk because no, it was him alone with God. Sister Audrey Marshall, I hear the Lord said I should tell you he's going to give it to you. I don't know what you're asking him for, but I hear the Lord said, tell Sister Audrey Marshall, I'm going to give it to her. God said to tell you, he's going to give you. Sister Audrey, I don't know the story. I don't know why you're, why you, what you're asking him for. I don't know what you're getting ready for. But he said, tell you. Audrey Marshall Nelson. I hear the Lord said, tell her. I'm going to give it to her. Because giving you this thing. It will give you peace. Whatever you are asking God for, it will give you peace of mind. My God. Oh, God. I release this thing upon your life. I see you in your room and you're praying. And it's funny because you pray the same prayer every day. Sister Audrey Marshall Nelson, I release this thing upon your life. Anywhere your name is written, any place your name is mentioned, you will go there. I decree and I declare this thing done. Enough is enough. You have been waiting long enough. You have been talking about it long enough. You prayed over it long enough. And I hear the Lord said, tell you, I'm going to give it to you. Take your portion right now. Take your portion right now. He said, I'm answering your prayers. Take your portion right now, Sister Audrey. You pray enough. You cry enough. You wait enough. Now it's your turn. Take it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. The Bible said, Ezekiah, turned to God he turned his face to the wall and he started to pray and the prayer he prayed he said remember now so you see he was reminding God about his past but his past was a good past because this thing that he's reminding God about is going to help him extend this life God is ready to give some of us a second chance but he's waiting for us to pray Ezekiah turned his face to the wall after the prophecy came from the prophet and he said remember no oh God so Ezekiah he had a covenant with God so he was reminding God about the things that was expected of him that he did. 
Jesus. Ezekiah turned to God. Hallelujah. Ezekabokoshaya. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ezekiah faced the wall. It's the same way you close your eyes when you're praying. So no distractions. So now he turned his face to the wall. So there were no distractions. He was not talking to the wall. He was talking to God. But with his face turned to the wall, he can think. He, he, he Yes, he went deep in his thoughts. My God. Jesus. He went deep in thoughts. And he said, remember, no, oh Lord. I beseech thee how I have walked. God is saying, there are so much distractions. We cannot walk right before him. There are too many things before us. We should focus on him. Too much distraction. Some of us don't even know the word walk, what it means in Christ to walk. To walk is not your physical steps. It's how you behave. It's your daily activities, your day-to-day -day going about your business. Hallelujah. That is your walk. The things that you do is not your physical steps. It's righteousness. Live in the life you live. Living the right life to please God. So when somebody said, I walk right before God, it does not mean somebody taking baby steps or you're walking around and you're checking the way you walk. No, that's not the kind of walk. Some people said it's their Christian walk. Some people said it's my spiritual life. No. It's not steps. It's a, the Bible said the footstep of a good man are ordered by God. So Ezekiah was not talking about his actual steps. He was talking about the things that he did. It was spiritual. It was not physical. Ezekiah said, Sister Audrey Marshall, you're saying what are, you're crying and you're saying true. It's true. I know it's true. I <laughs> I'm not conceited when I said I know it's true. I'm saying I know it's true because the Spirit of the Lord told me. That's basically it. I, I, I use Ezekiah and Isaiah as an example because when Isaiah came with the word to Ezekiah, there were no dialogue. Ezekiah. He didn't have much to say. He heard the news that the Lord said, thus says the Lord, you are going to die. Put your house in order. So he turned his face to the wall and he began to talk about his life that he lived before he got sick. Because once you're down, once you're sick, you're in one spot. He was talking about the life he lived when he was able to move around. So he's saying this, remember now, O God, I beseech thee. He was asking for mercy. Ezekiah was asking for mercy. He said, oh, I have walked before you in truth. So it was not his steps. He was talking about truth. Sometimes we, the things that we say out of our mouth, it can destroy our spiritual walk. 
Ezekiah said, oh, I walk before you in truth. It means that we can contaminate our spiritual life by lying. You can be a born again. You gave your life to the Lord. You are Holy Ghost filled, speaking in tongues, but you still struggle with the spirit of lying. And that can destroy your walk with God. My God, I don't know who I'm talking to. But it can destroy you. When you lie. Ezekiah said in truth. Meaning that there was no lie to his story. Because you cannot bring a lying story before the man of the king of kings. Your maker. You cannot lie to him. You can lie in court to the judge. You can lie to anyone. But you cannot lie to God. Because he is your maker. Hallelujah. So Uncle Ezekiah. I said uncle because he's ahead of me. Uncle Ezekiah was reminding God about the life that he lived before he got sick. He wasn't praying because he taught everything. You see, this is our problem. We think everything is cool because we are baptized. So we don't have to pray. Some of us, because we are baptized, we don't even think we have to go to church. We don't think we have to fellowship with anybody. We don't even think we have to pray. But the Bible said, pray with one another and confess your sins. Confess your sins. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to say this. I just don't know who the Lord is using me to talk to. But I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Some of us, we think we are so, we have it so good. We don't have to pray because we are, we are already baptized. So we can sin sometimes and we can do this sometimes and we can go and party sometimes because we are already baptized. So we think we are safe. No, the moment you give your life to the Lord, you sign up for trouble. Trouble will come. Trouble will find you. My sister, trouble will find you. Some men will say they don't want no woman out of the church because the women in the church, they were once on the street. And the devil already beat them left, right, and center. So these women are so slick. They are in church, but they are scammers and con artists because they were once out there. They'd rather take a woman off the street and bring her in the church. While some men, some women will say, I don't want no man off the street. I want a man in the church because he's already finished with the world. Hallelujah. Let me tell you this, people of God. Once you turn your life over to Jesus, expect warfare. Expect the adversary to come at you daily. This is why he said, his mercies are new every morning. Because God knows so many things are expecting to happen to us. So we can run to him every day. The other day, you, you hear that it's 365 fear not in the Bible. So it's one a day. Fear not Sunday. Fear not Monday. Fear not Tuesday. Fear not Wednesday. Fear not Thursday. Fear not Friday. Fear not Saturday. One a day for the 52 weeks of the year. Fear not. Fear not. Oh, Jesus, somebody help me to pray. Sister Petronia Bailey, good night. The Spirit of the Lord is telling me that you're going to have another debt in your family. Hallelujah. You see, I don't like to be a bearer of bad news, but God is saying 
someone is going to die in your family. Sister Petronia Bailey. Yeah. Prepare yourself and I'll pray your strength. So, people of God, Ezekiah know the relationship he had and the covenant he had. So, he had no one to call, nowhere to turn. So, he turned to Jesus Christ and he cried out. Hallelujah. Ezekiah cried out to God. Why? Because he had an issue that need urgent attention. He needed a divine intervention. But let me tell you something. Ezekiah never pray any long prayer. Sometimes we ask people to pray with us or to pray for us. And because they didn't pray a long market prayer, we think they didn't pray. They pray. You don't need a long from Genesis to Revelation scriptures. One word is sufficient. But Ezekiah said, I walk right before you in truth with a perfect heart. And I've done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiah wept sorely. So you see, it was one sentence. Ezekiah prayed. And it saved his life. People of God, I don't know if you get this. Most of the prayer was crying. You know, tears is a language only God can understand. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us in groanings. Sometimes you want to pray, you cannot pray. You just find yourself groaning. My God, I, I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. I, I, I just want to talk to somebody right now. Ezekiah, one sentence. It was only one sentence. He mentioned to God. And that one sentence took care of business. Because after he prayed that one prayer. My God. The Bible in verse 4, we are in the book of Isaiah chapter 38, and I'm at verse 4 now. He says, Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, because Isaiah was the messenger in question. Isaiah, God called him and said to him, Go, say to Ezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard that one sentence move God. So God said, go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. One sentence provoke the hand of God. One prayer, one sentence prayer. You see, people of God, you don't have to pray all day for God to hear. He said, my ears is not deaf. Isaiah never heard the prayer. He was the prophet, but he never heard the prayer. God, you see, all it takes is your faith. I, I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but all it takes is your faith to believe that God hears you. Your prayer will touch God. Believe in your prayer. Don't just pray. If you don't believe, forget it. You got to believe. Believe in your prayer. If you don't believe, forget it. Ezekiah, one sentence. If you look at the Bible, one verse, one line. 
Ezekiah said, remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee. Oh, I walk right before you with a perfect heart. Which is good. That's it. He walk right with a perfect heart, which is good. That's it. And he begin to cry. Sometimes you don't have to call anybody and tell them anything. Just turn your face to the wall like Ezekiah and talk to God. If God already give the prophet the word to give you, why do you doubt it? Why do you doubt what God said? God don't lie. It might not happen right away. And it might happen right away. Because that is the God you serve. The thing might not happen right now. But it will sure happen once you believe. Oh Jesus. The Bible said, the Lord told Isaiah to go back and said to Ezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, Thus the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years. You see, when you pray to God, when you cry out to God, when you talk to God, don't talk to God about anybody unless you're praying for them. Go to God. Intercede for yourself. Tell God about what you did. Tell God what you did. What kind of heart you walk around with. Because that was what Ezekiah did. Tell God about the things that you did was right before him. Because God knows what you did. But he wants you to talk to him. God wants glory from your life. And the only way you can glorify him is serve him and him alone. Ezekiel never jump on the bike on, 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 on a horse or, or, or in a chariot and said he's gonna go and search for pastor. No. Ezekiah cry out to God. The Bible said the man cry bitter. Have you ever seen a man cry? Jesus. Have you ever seen a man cry? Somebody tell me. Have you ever seen a man cry? Hallelujah. People of God, I'm going to finish this message tomorrow. Because, you see, God don't lie. God never lie. Hallelujah. Brother Devon, can I get a song? Excuse me for a second, people of God. Can I get a song?
never runs out. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My God. People of God, this is this is hard to swallow. The man only had one sentence. He took it to God. And he was extended for 15 years. We, as mankind, we have a little bit of problem. And we are calling everybody. Sharing the information. We cannot pray when we have a problem. And what the Bible is telling us right here. You don't have to pray a long prayer for God to hear you. God said, I heard his cry and I have seen his tears. Isaiah left. Isaiah left. And God said, go and tell him. So Isaiah had to turn back. In spite of the word that God gave him. Thus says the Lord, you're going to die. No, he said, go back and tell him, thus says the Lord, I have seen your tears. I heard your prayer. I'm going to extend your life. And I'm not just going to extend your life. I'm going to establish you. And I'm not just going to establish you. I'm going to give you, restore you back to your rightful spot. And I'm not just going to do that. I'm going to give you a city and I'm going to be your bodyguard. My brothers and my sisters, I came tonight to encourage you that yes, you can pray for yourself. Yes, you can intercede for yourself. You just got to be faithful. You just have, you need a pure heart. If your heart is not pure, repent. Repent. If your heart, if you know your heart is not right, repent. Ezekiah said, Lord, remember now. You see, this is the part that got me. It was one sentence. He didn't talk long. He cried. Hallelujah. I, I, I don't know if anybody here understand what happened with Ezekiah. He received the news that he was going to die. He faced the wall and he cried to God. I came to tell you tonight, people of God, whatever the Lord has said about you, it will come to pass, but you have to believe. You have to believe. Men don't really cry. Even if a man is crying, he hide. <laughs> Even if a man is crying, he will hide. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Even if a man is in pain, he's not going to show you. He will hide it. Because it's, I don't know if it's pride or it's strength. I don't know which one of the two, but it's very seldom you see a man cry. Men hide sickness very well. A woman will hide her pain, but a man will hide his sickness from you. A man will fool you when he's sick. If a man tell her he's sick, rush with him to the hospital. If a man tell you that he is sick, rush with him to the hospital. Don't hesitate. Hallelujah. Don't hesitate. My God. Jesus. 
if a man wants to look at you and give you that sign as if something is going on with him, it's bad. It's because he can't hide it anymore. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he will tell the doctor how long not in your presence. It's true. It's true. Mm -hmm. Never take for granted when a man said he's sick because they don't show it. Even if they're limping and they see you as a woman, they'll walk straight. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I'm saying. People of God, let me tell you this. It's not a joke. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not laughing because I want to laugh, but this is a true story. A man will be limping, and as soon as he see a woman coming, he will walk straight. Yes, even if he will fall, he will walk straight. He will pretend. So if a man is around you and he act like he's sick, rush him to the emergency room because men don't, sh they, they find ways to hide something when something is wrong. They'll go to someone else when something is wrong with them. Yes. And I, like I said, <laughs> it's not, if it's, I don't know if it's pride and I, or if it's strength. But a man know how to hide it well. Oh God, Sister Ayasin said confirmation. Amen. It's true. It is true. So I encourage you people of God. You don't have to pray a long one book of prayer in order for God to hear you. No, you don't. No, you don't. He hear you. My God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In the book of the same Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1, it says, The Lord's arm is not too weak to save you, nor is ear too deaf to hear your call. God can hear you. He's not deaf. So it doesn't matter how long God takes to answer your prayer. When you pray, he hears you. When you pray with a pure heart, he hear you. You see, Paul was in prison with Silas. They put them in jail because he rebuked a young woman that they were hustling off of the woman, the young woman. And Paul rebuked that spirit that the woman had, spirit of divinity. They were using her to make money. And the moment that spirit left that woman, the woman became free. So Paul got into trouble. They put him and Silas in jail. And at, they were praying at midnight. <laughs> when everybody was asleep, the jailer was asleep. The prisoners were sleeping. They chained Paul and Silas and put their feet between planks. They couldn't move. But even though they were in chains, they prayed. Bible said at midnight, it's in the book of Acts. At midnight, the chains broke. There was an earthquake. All the jail doors were open. That was the anointing that Paul carried. All the jail doors were open. The guard, 
wanted to kill himself. He wanted to commit suicide. Paul said, don't do that. I'm here. We are still here. But the difference was when Peter was in jail, they arrest Peter and put him in jail, in prison. Peter didn't pray. The saints, the Bible said, the saints make intercession for him. And the angel of the Lord went into prison and take him out. So it was a different anointing. People of God, let me share something with you. Paul and Silas prayed while they were in jail. And the angels opened the jail door. Some of us, you see, I'm going into these things when people are under pressure and pray. Pa Peter never pray. The saints pray for him. But while Paul was in shackles, he prayed. He carried a different kind of anointing. Some of us, we don't want to feel pain. And when we feel pain, we don't pray. Because we are in pain, we can't pray. He was in jail. He was in shackles. He was in bondage. They bound him. He was bound. But he prayed. And God released him. Tonight I came to ask you, what kind of problems do you think you have that is so bad that you can't pray? Ezekiah was dying and he cried out to God. That was not even for two minutes. He said one sentence and the rest was in tears. The Bible said he wept bitterly. Tonight I came to tell you in the same book of Isaiah chapter 59, God is saying my ears is not deaf to hear you. He's expecting you to pray. Whatever your problem is, God is expecting prayer to come out of you. He said out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. God wants you to pray. He wants you to make intercession for yourself. Tonight it's not about your friends. It's about you. God is expecting you to open your mouth and talk to him. He said he's not deaf. He's listening. He's waiting for us to pray. Hallelujah. He's expecting you to pray. Jesus. Glory to God. Behold, the hand of the Lord is not shortened that he can save you. Neither is hears heavy that he cannot hear you. God is waiting to save his people. He loves you. He's waiting to save you. But you have to pray. You have to come out of your comfort zone and pray. You might be thinking that your situation is so bad. Everybody is having life better than you. So you don't have time to pray because you are mirroring other things that's not even important. Pray. Stop looking at the things that's not even valuable. It's time to pray. It's time to cry out to God. Open your mouth and pray. God is waiting for you. It's true. The Bible said at midnight, when everybody was sleeping, the same man that they put in jail with his partner, they prayed. And it shook you see, when God is getting ready to do something, there must be a reaction. His action of prayer caused a reaction. There was an earthquake. Sometimes your prayer can cause earthquake, but you won't understand it because you don't want to pray. You think everybody should be praying for you. No. God wants to prove himself to you. But you got to pray. He's waiting for you to pray, to open your mouth and pray.
Sometimes you're waiting for your pastor to pray for you. But did you know that sometimes it's time for you to pray for your pastor? My God. I, I don't know who the Lord sent me here to talk to tonight. But I came to tell you, it's prayer time. Somebody said, oh God, anything that is blocking my prayers, I destroy it right now with your blood. Because some of us, we have prayed some prayer and we are still waiting for answers. We are still wait, waiting for the Lord to show up. We are still waiting for God to answer our prayers. So we say we're not praying anymore because God don't answer. God don't remember us. God don't care for us. He cares for you. He cares. Cast all your cares on him. He cares. God cares about you. Stop worry. Pray. Somebody say, why worry when you can pray? Hallelujah. Somebody say, why worry? When you can pray, Jesus, my God, it's time to pray, people of God. It's time to pray, Jesus. In Psalm chapter 61, it says, hear my cry, O God, and attend unto my prayer. God is waiting for us to pray. Psalm 61, remind us. My God, hear my cry, O oh God. Hmm. Hear my cry. Thank you, Jesus. Hear my cry, O oh God, attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth, Will I cry unto you? When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than high. It's not just a song. It's written in the Bible. This was one of David's prayer. Hear my cry, O Lord. Psalm chapter 61. Hallelujah. Jesus. God want to do more for you, but you have to pray. Jesus. You have to pray. Hear my cry, O God, and attend unto my prayer. So you cry and pray. Crying is not only a sign of weakness. Because tears is a language that only God can understand. Sometimes you're praying. And when the Holy Spirit begins to usher you into the presence of the Lord, you begin to just cry. And you're flowing with tears. And you can't stop because it's the Holy Spirit that's ushering you into the presence of God. Cry out to God. People of God, it's time for us to talk to him. He's, God is so jealous of us. He's waiting for us to come to him and talk to him. Mm -hmm. He is waiting for us to come and talk to him. And this is what I came tonight to tell you. That Jesus loves you. And you don't have to pray a long prayer in order for him to answer you. And it doesn't matter how difficult life looks or how difficult things seem. God will take care of you. He will take care of you. He will bail you out of any, yes, unfavorable situation you got yourself into. He will take you out. There is nothing too hard for God to do in your life. There is no mess that your life have that God cannot fix. Your mess can turn out to be a big message for somebody else. The reason why I talk so much is because of all the things that I've gone through, all my atrocities, and that's why I have all these testimonies. 
So don't count yourself short because your life didn't turn out like what you're expecting it to. God is saying, come to him, repent, turn your life over to him. Everything will work out. Cry out to him. Don't be afraid to pray. Many of us are afraid to pray because we think we don't deserve him. Listen to me. In man's eyes, we are not worth it. But in, his, in God's eyes, we are the apple of his eyes. In the eyes of man, we are nothing. But in the eyes of God, we are the apple of his eyes. We are the apple of God's eyes. He loves us. He will leave the whole platform to go and call somebody and find that lost sheep and then come back to be with us. That's how he is. That's how precious you are to God. You are precious in his sight. You are chosen by God. You were bought for a price. His blood was shed for you and for I. So why are you worried? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. Don't let the devil tell you that you're not worth anything. You mean everything to God. Yes. Sometimes when I look at some people and, I, and the Lord begin to reveal them to me and I see where God is taking them and where they are, you know, I just shake my head in grief and I said, Lord, take over. Yes. Yes. We mean everything to God. We do. Because he cannot glorify himself. So he created us to glorify him. We need him. God did not put us on her to die prematurely. He said, above all, I pray, I wish that every one of you live and prosper and be in good health as your soul prosper. God didn't say he wants you to die before your time. That was not of God. He will allow the devil to touch you if you're disobedient. Yes. Yes. Because he's jealous. So sometimes some little things happen. God allowed the devil to enter into our personal space because of our disobedience. That don't mean that he don't love us because when, when the devil enter in our space, it brought us to our knees and we go back to God. That's how jealous he is. If you're married to an individual and you put that person before God, remember I tell you this, be careful. Put no one before him. You'll get into trouble. Not even the children. God said, I'm so jealous. Don't put your children before me. Don't put your job. Don't put your boss. Don't put your spouse. Don't put money. Put nothing before me. Serve no other God but me. He wants to bless you. He wants to heal you. He wants to establish you the same way in the book of Psalm chapter 40 remind us. Hallelujah. I waited patiently for the Lord and he heard my prayer. He picked me up out of the miry clay. He set my feet upon the rock. He established my goings. God wants to bless you. But you need to come with a pure heart. Jesus. Hallelujah. Come with a pure heart. Any unfavorable situation you find yourself in, he will take you out of it. You just have to pray and ask for help. Hear my cry, O Lord, and attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth, I cry out to you. It means that it doesn't matter where you are. 
Joseph was in the dungeon. But God remember him. David said, I was in a pit, a horrible pit, filled with clay, miry, dirty, murky clay. And God took him out of it. Psalm chapter 40. Jesus. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. God like when you cry, he will come. Yes. You are his baby. Cry out to him. When you have your children and they cry, you go to them. You take care of them. He's your father. Amen. Amen. He said he brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay and set my feet upon the rock and establish my going. God wants to establish you, but you have to cry. In verse 1, Psalm chapter 40, verse 1, it says, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He cried. When you cry out to God, it's powerful. That's it. Cry out to God. Tell him what's going on. Tell him what's bothering you. He will come to you. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to be here in the morning, my time is up. Amen. Glory to God. Jesus. Today is the 11th of the month. Some people have not given us anything yet and we are still um, collecting donations. Two people will receive donation funds this week, Thursday, this Thursday. Two people will be receiving funds from this ministry because God says so. So we are still collecting donations in regards to it. Hallelujah. We are still collecting people of God. We're trying to get a decent device so we can come and come clear when we go on broadcast. Hallelujah. We are collecting donations. The Lord has been good unto us so far. But we are still collecting donations because two people will receive money this month to pay some bills in their home. And buy some food, whatever they want to do with it. We're giving away cash to families this week. So I'm here to let you know the number is at the bottom of the screen. You know, whatever the Lord touch your heart to do for the ministry. Even if it's one dollar. We appreciate it. Two people. And I thank God that he has given us this opportunity to be a blessing. And people of God, when you when you support charity, there is no limit to your life. No, you break walls, you break barriers with charity. There, there are no limits when you support charity. So I encourage you to stretch forth your hand financially during this event. We are, we are blessing a family every month on the 15th of the month so they can take care of their personal issues in their home. And God have selected two people. Two people were blessed last month, two people this month, two people will be blessed next month. And also in December, two people will also be blessed. Hallelujah. Two people will be blessed in December and November. So I encourage you people of God. I pray. We never ask for financial help, but no, we we do need it because we, we need to get a, a nice device, something that we can rely on to work. Many mornings I get up and this thing don't even work. Hallelujah. And as the ministry is growing, we need to do better. We need to have a clear view, better background. We are trying to set it up nice. Amen. 
and we have to be obedient to bless two families according to the word of God. Glory to God. According to the word of God, we have to do it. And I love to be obedient. It feels good, you know, to be a part of it. And it's going to happen this Thursday. And when you order your shawl and your oil, that gives me a chance to put money in it also. Because everything for the month of October is 10% discount. Oil, holy water, prayer shawl, and the gift box. It has a cross in it, and um, holy oil, holy water, frankincense, and dirt. All from Jerusalem. I don't know why they put dirt in it, but I guess it has significance because it came from Israel. Amen. So order your stuff. They are all 10% off. It's my birth month. My birthday is the end of the month. So the Lord told me to give back 10% off of everything. because, And that's my gift for the birthday, to give back 10%. So I'm here giving back. Hallelujah. Two people will be selected next month. Two people will be selected for December and January. Every month, the Lord wants us to donate. Let me share something with the people of God. It's very powerful to give money from a ministry to someone out there. It's powerful. Why? Because this is what God said he's doing in this season. So be a part of it. And if you can't afford to, invite someone, should broadcast with them so they can help. If you're not in any position to help, you don't have your documentation to have a decent job, I pray for the Lord to bless you. If you don't have a job because COVID-19, you lost your job, I pray that God open doors for you in this time so you can have all the necessities that you need. Because of the pandemic, a lot of people lost their job, and I understand that. I'm praying for the Lord to open doors for everyone on this platform so they can step forth and said yes. Sister Keisha, God bless you. Sister Ayasinth, God bless you. Glory to God. May the Lord bring it back to you in a thousand folds, whatever you release in the ministry. May it come back to you. May that money never leave your life. May it be a seed that will always bear fruit for you and your generations to come. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for you. I pray for the work of your hands. I pray for every heart that will stretch forth financially to bless this ministry so we can give back to God's people. My God, I pray for your increase in advance in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. People of God, this is a mighty move of God. I've never seen anything like this. But I'm thankful to God that I am a part of it. I'm grateful. It's a blessing. God is doing mighty things in this time. And we are grateful to have this thing in our midst. To prove that God is still here. The person that received the money last month is here. One of them is here on the live right now. It's nothing personal, people of God. God just selects some names. And the person that received last month... Two people received last month. One person received in September. So God is doing... The, listen, the more you give, the more they will receive. The less you give, the less they will, will receive. And the Lord said, it has to split. We're trying to buy a device and people will receive money out of it. That's it. Amen? Device for the ministry. Glory to God. Two people received last year, and I guess both of them are here because I see their names. So this is not just to talk about. This is happening in real life, in real time. Real life, real time. God is blessing his people in this time financially. And I wish I was on the other side. <laughs> I wish I was on the other side. Hallelujah. Somebody said, God bless you, Rev, and your family. Full of 
blood coverage over you. Yes, glory to God, I receive it. You see, it doesn't matter. Sometimes some people, they do raffle and you never find out the winner. There is no, there are no winners. But right here on the 15th, come and you will see for yourself. Because I'll be praying for them. Come live on the 15th and you will see for yourself. And prove God for yourself. Amen. Prove God for yourself. On the 15th of every month, you come right here and listen. You'll hear the prayers and you will know because the person, I will pray for them. To God be all the glory. I just love how to share out the word too. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody go ahead and bless the Lord. This is, if this is what God wants for us to do, then so shall it be. If this is one of the things that God is saying for us to do, then so shall it be. My God. The number is at the bottom of the screen, people of God. If you don't know how to send, you can WhatsApp me. 860-634-8557. God bless your sister Angela. Yes. This is real money in real time on this platform. Come on the 15th of the month. If you, if the Lord touch your heart to send, go ahead. If you don't have it and you want to be nosy, you can still come and you will hear for yourself. Hallelujah. Season of new beginnings. Amen. My time is up. I have to go. I'll see you in the morning. Amen. God bless you all. Have yourself a good night. And I pray the Lord touch your heart. If you haven't given anything yet, to stretch forth your hands to bless two families in this time. Glory to God. And it's not blessing two families who are asking for help. It's blessing two families who God has selected. So this is not like somebody's asking for anything. These are people who God select. Glory to God. Amen. So people of God, give with a willing heart. Give with a willing heart. May the Lord bless you and continue to bless you and your family. And for those of you that have already given, may the Lord double up on your blessings in the month of October. Hallelujah. May the Lord double up on the, yes, on your blessings in this month. God bless you all and good night.